Anirudh, Anirudh. Anirudh, waiting for Anirudh to confirm. Sorry, brother, you have to join now as the quiz, you know, progresses. Okay, so here we start. Three, two, one, go. So the first question on screen, read carefully and then answer. Okay, all of you will have to continuously put your mics on mute. Okay, so now they have changed, it seems. Oh. Okay, so the first answer is, okay, so still people are doing, do it. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, they have redesigned it. They have changed many things actually. Uh, we are also trying to adapt with that. Yeah, so now you don't get to see how many people have already voted. So that's good. So you don't know. How many people have voted right so just relax and solve focus on solving the question yeah less pressure good <laughs> okay so first question was very easy it was uh, based on your last grade concepts on linear equations okay so here is the ah uh, lots of people have made a mistake why but okay lots of people have made a mistake 28 right why why did you didn't read properly i told you so this was the question there cannot be any distance between two intersecting lines if you see x is zero and y is equal to eight are intersecting lines they are nowhere parallel okay so x equals to zero is y axis and y is equal to eight is x axis and eight yeah so what is the distance between this line and this line right silly right so what is the right answer so you have to check first of all which are parallel lines so these are parallel lines and these were parallel lines right these were parallel lines x equals to minus 1 and x equals to 9 so x equals to minus 1 is this line and x equals to 9 is this line somewhere like that so total distance is 10 so this is not correct only y is equal to 5 and y is equal to minus 3 is any problem in this one yeah so the, don't expect linear equations question to be only solving linear equations you must have the concepts clear of why and how do we study linear equations anyways done shall we proceed so the first leaderboard yeah okay very good. So Aniket Gupta. Okay, so nice. Here is the next question. All of you would have got your yeah, this thing. There is someone called Volcanian. I don't know who. Anyways, uh, next question please. Someone's mic is on. Not not on mute. Can you just mute it? Otherwise, I will have to just change the window. Okay, solve. Which of the following doesn't represent a line? Take your time. It will require some bit of thinking.
Sorry guys. Can you hear me? Just give me a confirmation. Can you hear me? Yeah, thanks. Okay. So here is okay, fine enough. I hope all of you would have answered this. Okay, very good. Let's see. Uh <laughs> Lots of people have made a mistake. Yes. So those who have, so D was a zero equal to zero form. So you should have identified that. So basics struggling. This is clearly a linear equation. No problem. Right. What is a linear equation? AX plus BY plus C is equal to zero. This is a form of linear equation where A cannot be zero. B cannot be zero. Right, and A, B, and C can be any real number. A, B, C are real numbers. Right. So this is very well, very well satisfies this one. This one also satisfies. You know, just you know, manipulate. This one also is a linear equation because this is 4.5x plus 0y plus 1 equals 0. So this one is very much a linear equation. This one is not a linear equation. Why? Because this is 0x plus 0y plus 0 equals to 0. This is that form. Why? You would have learned in ninth grade that 1 upon 2 minus root 3 is equal to 2 plus root 3. If you rationalize, you will get this one. Okay, 1 minus 2 root 3. Rationalize the denominator, you will get 2 plus root 3. So that means 2 plus root 3x and 1 by 2 minus root 3x are same thing. Okay, so this is 0x. Similarly, 2 minus root 3 y and 2 plus root 3 y are same thing, 0, 0, right? So they just get cancelled. So hence, this equation is of the form of 0x plus 0y plus 0 is equal to 0. And this cannot be linear equation. See, in the very basic question, how many people have got it right? Sir, is it, is it wrong to say that the reason is that there are irrationals in the denominator? No. What did I say? A, B, and C are real numbers. It could be anything. A, B, and C. There is no restriction on A, B, and C. The only restriction is A and B simultaneously cannot be 0. Both of them cannot be 0. Right? And this was the only option where both A and B was becoming 0. So hence, irrational numbers are allowed. Irrational numbers are very much allowed in linear equations. Okay? Is that okay? Only the powers, power will be only one, right? The power of the variable has to be one, right? There is no, no, no ambiguity in that. Okay, fair enough. So basics, clear your basics. Okay, next question. Before that, the leaderboard. Okay, right? So, good Nice. Let's go to the next question. Read carefully and then answer. Don't jump on answering. Read each one of them, each of the options. Take time and solve. Read each question very, very carefully. Each question will have some bit of information. Cool. So if everyone is, everyone would vote together then we can proceed never mind take your time and try also to think even if you marked why others or is there any possibility of other options to be true or incorrect or correct whatever
last 15 seconds. Yes, so let's see how many of you actually got it correct. Hmm. <laughs> X-axis is not zero slope line. Aren't all true? Okay. Aren't all true. Uh, so those who have marked B, why did you mark B? Can anyone unmute and say? All of you can hear me, correct? Hello? Are you able to hear me, guys? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. And guys, I think I am facing some issue. Just give me a moment. Uh, just a minute. How do I? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Yes. So, uh, so here is the solution first of all so two lines may intersect exactly at one point yes possible this is very much possible this is what we are learning we are trying to find out the solution right okay x axis is the zero slope line what is the slope of x axis zero this is very much correct right right and two lines if at all they will intersect they will intersect exactly at one point there is no ambiguity in that okay there are infinitely many solutions to a linear equation in two variables. Yes. Wait a minute. So this is the, if two lines are not parallel, they will intersect at a point. Not necessary. Not necessary. Why? Why? Because if you take two intersecting lines and just displace them in vertical direction, Okay, or imagine like that, uh, in your room right now, there are two lines, right, which are, you know, uh, uh, one line at the roof and the other line, other line is on the wall, like that. So when there are no, they, if they are not coplanar, this is possible, right? When they are no, not coplanar, this is possible, okay? Did you get this second point, guys? If two lines are not parallel, yes, obviously. Did I say this is 2D? Why, Anish, in which case it is not, uh, Aditi, in which case there are not infinitely many solutions to a linear equation in two variables? I am talking about only one linear equation in two variables. Why are you assuming a Cartesian plane? Did I say anywhere? I am just talking about two lines. Have you ever... Are we even talking about any planes, planes, anything we have given? No. Why are you assuming? I said which of the two lines is not correct. Okay. So two lines, if they are not parallel, need not intersect. Okay. When is that possible? When they are at in two different planes. So imagine a line uh, on the roof of your room and one line on the floor of the room. Right. Even if they are not parallel, they will never intersect. Okay, so hence B is the option. See, in the three very basic questions, we have not got into the solution part of, uh, you know, the linear equation so far. They will add some distance. Now, who started the video? I don't require the video. Please turn, turn it off. Yep. Please. Yeah, anyways. So, sir, they will... At, a, at some distance. Never, my dear. If two planes are coplanar, uh, two two planes are parallel, right? Imagine, as I'm telling you, imagine a line on the roof, another line on the floor. They are not parallel. Let's say, and they will never intersect, isn't it? Sneha, is that clear? Sneha, is it clear? Yeah, Aniket. Any any issue here? Any problem? Anyone? Did you understand? Okay. Let's move ahead. Okay. Let's go to. So most of you did it wrong. X axis is very much zero slope line. There's no slope in that line. Okay. So change. Shuffle. Very good. RN single. Keep it up. Next question on your screen. 
someone has his mic unmute can you please i request you to mute it who is this aniket gupta your mic and yeah aniket gupta mic mute Hmm. so you know this is basically question related to consistency of linear equations it was very very simple okay that's nice so fair enough okay so only 22 again that means you need a lot of lot of practice so i have to put another test on linear equations for all of you because okay so why what is the rule for two equations to coincide two lines to coincide it was a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is equal to c1 by c2 correct this is the rule for coincident lines the only set only one which satisfies is this one see the factor of 2.5 is there sorry uh, 1.5 yeah 4 into 1.5 is 6 yes correct so this is the for parallel lines parallel lines so oh, sorry not parallel coincident lines coincident lines these are coincident lines so people are making mistakes there please remember your rules right so if a1 by a2 is not equal to b1 by b2 then they are intersecting lines just to intersecting just to give you a some you know recap and a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 is not equal to c1 by c2 is parallel lines these are the three rules okay please remember so it was very simple question i don't know why many people have not marked it correct so here is the leaderboard okay let's see so some reshuffle cool okay never mind so let's go to the next question all set read the question carefully again as i'm telling you questions will be little tricky the wordings will be tricky no oh, so d option d has none of these d option has come up like some typing error is there so d option is none of these so now you are saved so one out of three is correct again infinitely many solutions i just gave you the rule in the previous slide hmm
Too much. Okay, let's see. If time is too much, then everyone should get it correct. Okay, see, let's see. See, even if with 100 seconds given, all of you have made wrong. Most of you have made, made it wrong. What is the point of having lots of time? Yep, all of you got it correct. How many? See, why? All of you have marked six. What was the question? I told you, read the question carefully. How many values of C? They are not asking value of C. They are asking how many values of C are there? Right? And all of you have marked the value of C. Right? So, hence the questions will be right like that only. So you, you guys don't understand. I keep on saying, I keep giving hint, keep giving hint that, you know, read the question carefully, read the question carefully, but no, see, you got trapped, right? This is how you will get trapped. See, both the options are there. These are the real exam scenario. Both the options will be there. You will be solving very easily. System of equation has infinity many solution. Why six upon 12 is equal to three upon uh, what C isn't it so you will you will find c is equal to six okay c is equal to six and then you'll see the option oh yes it is there click it and go but then question was how many values of c are there so only one value is there so answer is a clear understood the learning is learning i my mother tongue is hindi so i will give you one all of you would have read hindi sometime in your life maybe this do you understand this right yes one more correct so hence the anya you understood Sadhani Hati Durghatna Ghati. So you guys are on that track. It's like a cricket match. If you are if you are if you take away your eyes from the ball, gone, bold, right? And lost the match. So hence concentrate. And these are the types of questions which will be there to test your temperament more than see only 12. This is so surprising. Right? Anyways. See, lots of people have got it wrong. In the leaderboard itself, people have got it wrong. So that's that shows that where is your focus. Anyways, let's go to the next question. Again saying, read the question very, very carefully. Again, the same rule, but I don't know whether, again, <laughs> you are paying attention to the minute details. I hope this time also you will take time and then solve it. So why time has been given is solve and check again whether you have done it correctly. If option 1.5 was there, many would again make a mistake. Okay. So you understood the theme now, right? Questions and knowledge base will be very sound. You will be knowing everything. Very rarely you will miss. It's not Olympiad question. Olympiad is where you don't know the question only. How to solve. 
but in most of the competitive exams it will be like you know it but you would okay so here you see again lots of distribution happening now, again very few people are able to ace it i don't know what okay so you have forgotten the you know uh, the this thing okay so hence if you see this one was k plus 1x so you have to simplify this first ah uh, right so hence it is k plus 1x right minus 3y plus 6 equals 0 and the second equation is 3 plus k x minus 6y plus 15 is equal to 0 isn't it 3 what is 3 k is equal to 1 k is 1 right so you have to do what k plus 1 by 3 plus k should be equal to 3 by 6 okay 3 by 6 so what should be the value of k k is equal to 1 will satisfy this is it you can you can solve uh, right 6k plus 6 is 3 9 plus 3k okay so that means 3k is equal to 3 so k is equal to 1 All right so when i was framing this question i did not put this minus x on the right hand side i was putting it zero so hence i put minus kx also here yeah understood aniket gupta i told you this is what will happen this is exactly is what is going to be there All right so hence now you know the purpose of center mars anyways it will help if you now curse yourself that hey when will i you know set it right okay so eat one chapati lesser today tonight next oh misclicking can happen surya so really really can't help you there buddy sorry so here is the new leaderboard okay let's go to the next one again for god's sake read the question thoroughly read the question thoroughly this should be done by all so hence if if everyone votes so we can proceed just confirm once you're done so i'll request all of you to mark your answers if you are done but again spend time that would be better questions would be easy but they would be tempting you to do wrong activities so hence the only idea is to improve your improve your uh, what do you say consciousness but this is very simple question no very easy one okay Hmm. Okay. Very good. Nice. So, so why is this session conducted is to give you a taste of unconventional, unconventional approach towards problem solving. So don't really bank on only your, uh, you know, Adi Sharma's and RS Sarwal's and NCRT's for the basics. Okay. Here is the explanation. Very simple it was. Right. So AM is equal to BL. So AM is equal to BL. It will give you a by l is equal to uh, b by m 
and bn is not equal to cm will give you b by cn right c uh, cm yeah so b by m is not equal to c by m right and this is this this is possible only when they are parallel lines right so it's basically satisfying a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by b2 but not equal to c1 by c2 is it so when that is true then it has no solution clear any any question here any problem anyone no let's move ahead okay leaderboard hmm most of you did it right very good okay so let's go to the next question okay i don't know if you are able to see this so let me show you here which of the following graphs represent the line 2x plus 4y equals to 8 and 3x minus 4y is equal to 12 now i can't give you plotting a graph question here so i have done the other way around i have plotted two graphs and then you have to find this out shift it a bit so that i could know who all are Okay, so how much time is left? Twenty seconds. Hmm. What is the code? Someone. Code is eight zero five four eight three. Okay, so this was. okay most of you have got it correct that's nice yeah so how to solve this one again it was very very simple no time consuming it will not be time consuming at all that means no that means you have not implemented it properly how to you know very easy why see 2x plus 4y i hope you have not solved these equations no you don't need to do anything put x equals to 0 what is y y is 2 yes that's it correct sneha so x is 0 y is 2 so first point of the first line is 0 comma 2 right next put y is equal to 0 so you'll get x equals to 4 so 4 comma 0 is the another point so these two points are on the first line where are these 0 comma 2 0 comma 2 is here this one and 4 comma 0 is also here so this one option is there definitely none of the other options are uh, this one also is there right so out of these two only you have to check a and b okay then go to the next question uh, next equation 3x minus 4y is 12 put x equals to 0 again you will get y is equal to minus 3 and put y is equal to 0 you will get x equals to 4 right so 4 comma 0 and 0 comma minus 3 are the other two points So four comma zero is here and zero comma minus three. So A is the answer. How much time? So the question need not, you know, you didn't require to solve them. But you have to, Momi, that you can do. You can do. But then one has positive, one is one has negative. So don't you think you can get stuck here also? One has positive, one has negative intercept here also. So there are more such options, Momi. That. Momita is saying, can we check these slopes or y-intercepts? And one has one has positive. Okay, so you can eliminate. You can do that. 
Oh, I, try. I was thinking of slope. Oh, you're talking about y-intercept. Yes, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. You find out the, right? Yeah, that, that also can be done. So for precise, uh, you know, points. Uh, so if you, if only A has Y negative. Okay, so you are finding Y intercept. So Y intercept is found by putting X equals to zero in both. So what you are doing is put X equals to zero in both. So X equals to zero, if you put for first case, Y is two. And for second case, Y is minus three. Yes, the only option is this, correct? You can do that way. Yes, that was much faster than. Never mind. So let's go to leaderboard. Hmm. Okay. So this is the new standing. Never mind. Let's go to the next question. will require you to solve it This will require some solution. Some solving has to be done. Very simple question, I think. This is a typical question. But then, yes, I have not asked you the direct solution. I have now, I want to also check whether you, you have retained whatever you learned in previous grade or not. Okay, fair enough. So I think most of you would have got it correct. Oh, again, some spread is there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why in this, what was the problem? You had to just solve it, right? So use elimination and solve, that's it. Or if there is any other method, let me know. So it's very 2x minus y plus 3 is equal to 0. And this was 3x minus 7y plus 10 equals to 0. So what I'll do is I'll multiply this equation by 7. Correct? So that y can get eliminated. So 14x minus 7y plus 21. No, uh, avoid doing that. Avoid do, or, but then you know you never know. Yeah, it's basic. It's it, it will take same time instead of you know. So it it will give you very quickly answer also. So subtract it. You'll get 11x, 11x and uh, uh, plus 11 is zero. So x is minus one. So when x is minus one, you can find out y. So y is nothing but 2x, 2x plus three. So which is one. So minus one and one, how much time does it take? So minus one and one is in second quadrant. Okay. So try drawing graph when the graphs are complicated. For example, if you have now learned polynomials also, those who have learned, if I give you this, y is equal to x square minus three x plus one equals to zero. And y is equal to two x square minus five x plus two equals to zero. Let's say these are the, oh sorry, not equal to zero. These are the two, two graphs. Then where, then you have to plot, you know, then exactly, you know, uh, one way is to plot the graph and check, right? But then here it was linear, simple, 30 seconds. Never mind, but still most of them are not able to get it. So that's 
concerning hmm. see in the top 10 also there are lots of shuffling happening so that means you have forgotten now a month old so we we discussed linear equations in the very first few weeks so hence i think you have forgotten many things anyways next question so this this these kind of sessions will help you results are here okay now i hmm I hope you have done the basic calculations properly. Okay. So Very good. So three, two, and one. Let me see how many of you have. Okay. So still, oh ho 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 ho. Lots of people are getting confused. How many of you got it correct? Just give me a confirmation. Anyways, I have the result. I will check back. Okay. Very good. Mm hmm. Very good. So even if you don't know the uh, this particular form, you could have done it very easily by using trigonometry. Maybe that can come into you know. So what is this line? First of all, let's draw this line. So 4x plus 3y is 12. So if put x equals to 0, you will get y as 4. So 0 comma 4. So this is one point. And if put y equals to 0, you will get x as 3. So the other point is this one. So the line is like that. So this is 3, this is 4. Isn't it? And you have to find out this perpendicular distance, P. Okay. So clearly, let's say if this is theta. This will be 90 minus theta. So hence, this will also be theta. I hope this is understood by all. Right? You found out x and y intercept hypotenuse area and height half. Uh, ah, that is also correct. That's also so half into that's a, actually easier. Half into 4 into 3. So hypotenuse is 5, no problem. Half into 5 into p. Area will be same. Correct. The two ways of doing it. One is area method. This is area method. Find out the area. So area is half into 4 into 3 base into height. Right? And hence. Uh, yeah, that's also cool of guessing, right? So hence you will get P is equal to 2.4. There is no nota. What does it mean? Ha, ah, right. So hence be careful. Correct. Aditya has a point. Rn, there is a none of these also. So hence you have to check the answer anyways. Okay. So 2.4 is one, one way of doing this is like this. Another way of doing like that would have been. 3 upon p or p upon 3 p upon 3 is cos theta p upon 3 is cos theta and p upon 4 is sin theta check from your trigonometry right correct no p by 3 is cos theta p by 4 is sin theta square and add so p square by 9 plus p square by 16 is 1 
Why? Because sine square theta plus cos square theta is 1. So this is another way. So you will get p square common 1 by 9 plus 1 by 16 is 25 upon 9 into 16. I am doing the fast calculations faster. So this you can figure out yourself. So p square is equal to 9 into 16 upon 25. Isn't it? So p is 3 into 4 by 5. Which is 2.4. Either ways. This way also. Or those who know. Those who know the equation of a line. The third way of doing it is. Any equation of a line. Let's say. X upon A. Plus Y upon B. Or no. Uh, don't use this one. You will get complicated results. So there is another. Uh, you know which we had. Probably. Area method again. Yeah. See area of. So let me complete the third method first. So third method which I am talking about is there is a typical form of a linear equation where you can convert it. Yes, how does it, how does this form come any case? So there is a, you know, um, it's, you know, the, it's called the perpendicular from the origin and the line form. So there's a typical form where you can convert any linear equation which you learn in next year coordinate geometry. So that way, that method I am skipping. I am just telling you the area method once again. So area of the triangle, which triangle? ABC is what? Half into AB into BC. And this is also equal to half into AC, which is hypotenuse, into the P, perpendicular P. So what is P? Half half goes. So P is simply AB into BC upon AC. So 3 and 4 you knew. So by Pythagoras theorem this was 5. So apply 3 into 4 by 5, 2.4. Clear? Alisha. Right? So I hope this is clear to everyone. Let's go to the leaderboard and then the next questions. Okay. 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 So many people didn't get this correct. Why? And you took so much of time also. Very good. Next one. No problem. Next question. So man rows downstream at 12 kilometers per hour. I know. I hope you know what is downstream. So going along with the stream. And upstream at 8 kilometers per hour. That is going against the stream. He doubles his speed in still water. And rows 72 kilometers upstream. In T minutes. T is equal to. Okay, last 10 seconds. I hope this should be not that tricky. Fair enough. So, let me see how many of you have. Today I'm getting a lot of mixed responses. I don't know why. So there's no clear cut. People are just guessing or why why people have marked A or C. So D is very less so I can ignore. But A and C, why? Okay. So what how many of you could not solve this in time? Time was lesser? Or what happened? Anyone? Out of time. Okay. Anyone else? Who, who you know uh, struggled in this question any other struggle here so it was very easy question actually see a man row downstream so let's say v1 
a speed in still water so i told you right immediately after reading the question you know so re read it a man rows downstream at 12 and upstream at 8 obviously upstream will be lesser so verified he doubles his speed in still water and rows 72 km upstream so i need to have upstream speed no you can't you don't need to assume anything so speed of initial still water v1 v1 the is the speed in still water v2 is speed of water itself right so so v1 plus v2 is 12 correct and v1 minus v2 is 8 big deal right so sum 2v1 is 20 so v1 is 10 Correct, if V1 is 10, then V2 is 2, he doubles his speed. So, doubles means 20 now. Doubles his speed in still water, so he's now 20, but he's going upstream. So, his, his speed will be 20 minus 2, 18 kilometers per hour. And he covers 72 kilometers. So, how many hours? 72 upon 18 is 4, 4 hours. No problem. So 72 by 18 is 4, right? So 4 hours, 240 minutes. Okay, so 240 minutes is the right answer. So 21 of you, anyone who didn't get this? All, all clear? Actual speed much faster. No, I mean, sir, here we can assume actual speed much faster. Huh, that's That's the question. So, is the real speed average of upstream and downstream? Yes. So, for any V1 minus V2 is A, let's say, and V1 plus V2 is B, right? So, if you 2V1 is A plus B, or very good point, A plus V by 2, arithmetic mean. Not visible? What is not visible? Oh. Am I, am I audible, visible? Guys, yes, Aniket, yes, I am very much visible to everyone. So, yes, uh, Anirban, oh, board, oh, sorry. Huh. Yes, so good point raised by Momida that in case of, ups, but only in case of constant velocity. Constant velocity, Momita. If there is some acceleration happening, then you can't say, say that. Okay, so hence, upstream and downstream so yeah so the uh, still water velocity is nothing but the arithmetic mean of upstream and downstream velocity and the catch was that i had given you upstream so hence you had to subtract this two again which many people have missed and hence the problem okay next <laughs> oh out of 10 five people got correct that's surprising okay next last one question of last question of the day The largest angle of a triangle is twice the sum of the other two. The smallest angle is one fourth of the largest. The largest angle is. Hmm. 
trial and error is faster actually this question need not require any solving this question need not require or didn't require any solving no solution was no solution was no solving was required actually the first line itself no you don't don't even look you know so most of you have got it correct actually so you don't need to look at the options also so this is a useless information so i have deliberately added that so you have to identify which one is useless information so the smaller angle is one fourth of the largest will take away some time some people would have been involved in taking x and y and all that this itself was over so largest angle of a triangle is twice the sum of the other two so even if you would have taken x and y and z so x plus y plus z you know is 180 and x is given as 2y plus z so even if you have taken this for the sake of doing it so you'll get x plus this y plus z can be written as x plus x by 2 180 so clearly x is 120 degrees okay so this one is the so there will be what is the learning learning is there will be questions which will give you unnecessary information as well it happens in most of the competitive exams so hence whether you are able to screen off or siphon or you know sift through the data right the largest angle is many a times people will go back to this again why if the largest angle is asked why is this statement given so it also checks whether you are confident enough of whatever you are doing right so this is the correct answer thankfully most of you have got it right but not all that's surprising again but anyways yes so that's the question that was the intent of the question aryan so that the examinee get confused so they will deliberately try to confuse you because otherwise anyways so understood all these question question again yeah here is the question right all these questions were deliberately made to trap you trap in the sense why do i keep trap you know why do i do this not that i get some sadistic pleasure here but uh, you guys from my experience i know most of the errors happen at this stage only in the sense the last stage calculation stage not reading the question properly and uh, you know overconfidence yep and not checking your answer again and tempting tempted to and especially in mcq based exams what happens is you are tempted to bubble that round circle over there temptation is quite high and you know you have to learn how to control that temptation as well and hence by practice only it is possible so hence every centum hour with me or with anyone else we will try to fall we make you fall in the trap so that you learn 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 and eventually come as a winner okay so don't get disheartened if you are making such silly mistakes here but then do please learn and you know raise your consciousness more and more fair enough so the last leaderboard of today is this and let's see who was the person who got the first position so i think aniket gupta retains his first position followed by aden aditya and then uh, shreyas and then i then aryan singhal vibhav anish omesh and mahabal very good guys keep it up keep the learning intact congrats congrats to everyone but you could not get 12 anywhere closer to 12000 so some that's something also is the total marks was 7 12000 you got around 8000 so around 66% of marks you have got so hence think about it okay very good guys so let's meet again uh, by the way next week we are going to conduct one geography send mark maybe on maybe on monday itself so be ready right geography first chapter you have to just read through yes it's on menti and it will be an open book quiz so you can keep your book with you okay keep your book with you 10th grade first chapter geography which is going towards ntsc okay so hence yeah like this only like this only it will be like this only so you will be having the book soft copy first chapter whatever it is check it okay so uh, keep the copy keep the copy of the book with you and you are allowed to see through or go through the books go through the internet google it whichever way 
and let's see if you can solve geography problems then okay on monday bye take care enjoy